and the city gave one famously anarchic gentleman his first job and his first P45. Here we are, this is where Chris Morris first really started his broadcasting career. The man who went on to make Brass Eye. It doesn't look troubled, but it is. The day-to-day -day welcome. And many, many controversial things over the years. This is cake, the new killer drug from Prague. This is where he honed his craft, he learned his skills. He made a few mistakes <laughs> and made a few friends as well. This is BBC Radio Bristol. <laughs> Oh, good evening. This is Steve Yabsley. Welcome to the evening show. Well, when Chris came to Radio Bristol about 15 or 16 years ago, the station, although it was a good station, was quite a sort of pedestrian listen. We're going to be talking about ginger nuts later on. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, ginger nuts. Well, maybe it was time to introduce something a little bit different uh, to the schedule. Chris! Chris! And I'm not sure we realise we're getting somebody quite as different as Chris Morris. Go, goose, a goat. And suddenly this maverick joined us, did a Saturday morning show and a Sunday morning show, and it was something completely unlike anything we'd ever heard before. We're talking about the amount of time people spend saying things. Do you think mm -hmm. people spend too long saying things today? What do you mean, to their shelter or to other people, you mean? Both. Both? Wow. There are moves afoot to reduce the length of time some folk dwell on certain letters, like letter S. What, you mean capital letters, eh? Hmm. Uh, some people liked it, uh, some people certainly didn't. How long do you think we should say it for, then? Well, I say about three or four seconds, I should say, you know. Could oh. you demonstrate a three-second S? <laughs> bit longer. <laughs> Thanks for your help, then. The way that he spoke to people on the phones, the interviews he did out on the street, the interviews he did in the studio, were so odd and so funny and satirical, they were nothing like anything we'd ever broadcast before. At the end of his programme there was a news bulletin uh, that came from, a, immediately after his programme, from another small studio. News! The news studio where all the uh, news bulletins used to come from was quite a small thing, you know, it was about that big, and the, the reader used to stand there with a the microphone in front, and join one of the uh, late evening bulletins, Chris fed in some helium gas from some canisters actually into the studio. Strangeways Jail in Manchester. Those are the news headlines so far. The weather forecast for the county. So by the time the weather came along, he sounded utterly preposterous. Do excuse my voice, I can't help it at the moment. The coastal forecast, the sea state is rather moderate at present. <laughs> and the uh, apologies for this, we seem to have some problems with a few balloons. It seemed that the studio had been filled with helium, uh, which has that effect of create, turning somebody's voice into a kind of Donald Duck impersonation, and that's the way the news went out. When you were telling that story, you were smiling. I mean, did, did you find that funny? It really is sacrosanct news, it, not just in radio, in television. You can't muck about with news. He mucked about with news and he got fired. Um, I don't... Well, there was something uh, bizarre about it, and obviously it had led to something very unpredictable in the broadcasting. I mean, it was clearly something quite risky to do um, and could have had unforeseen consequences, which could have been quite problematical. Sinn Féin have so far denied they are backing the campaign. Earlier today, I spoke to their deputy leader, Rory O'Connor, who, under broadcasting restrictions, must inhale helium to subtract credibility from his statements. The I... Uh... Sinn Féin is a legitimate political party. Which supports terrorist action. Your tone is antagonistic and you're making me very angry. 